Hey Capper here. Today's video is a Project 211 update, but it's also more importantly about bush hogging in reverse. I've had a lot of people ask me about it, which is really cool, but then I've had a handful of people tell me that it's just plain wrong. And I'm going to show you with unequivocal proof that if you're bush hogging rough country like this, you better be going in reverse or you really don't know what you're doing. So the very first two clips I'm going to show you are what is at the ground level. You can't look at the whips on the top. You know, some of the whips are about the size of your finger. But at the, at the ground level, you have stumps that are literally two, three, and four inches large, okay, from previous bush hoggings. So after you see the first two clips, you will fully, completely understand why it is not only smart but correct to bush hog in reverse when you have this kind of ground now obviously if you have a skid steer with a bush hog in the front yay that would be wonderful but i don't and i just saved two thousand dollars in renting one and the tractor survived and the bush hog survived so things went pretty well overall but let's see some bush hogging some really nasty country and this may only be part one because I do have a lot of good drone footage too. So let's see what it's going to look like. There's an idea of some of the size of these stobs. Those are actually trees there. Now you can see it's about the size of my hand. That's two and a half inches, give or take, across. And that's this whole place is covered with them. Yeah, I remember these from uh, the tour yesterday. I asked Morris to take a look, tell me if they're worth anything. And he said one of them is brand new, but they're useless. And here's why. Boom! There's one hole. And one of them, he said, has a hole about the size of your fist. Man. But he told me to... Expect some pop tires with a property like this And he gave me a lot of good ideas though for how to prepare for it Okay, I don't really like loading this way, but uh, It's really the only option I have Well, okay, there's always other options, but this is the easiest Okay, it's actually not balanced very bad at all. I can tell by the, the rear gates on, on how they come up off the ground as far as if it's balanced in the middle pretty good. But you see up front here, I got this uh, wheel basically hooked over the front bar of the trailer. All right, and that gives me just enough uh, length to get my bush hog. This is a six foot bush hog. I keep the shaft disconnected because when it lifts all the way up, when the draft lifts it up, that really strains the angle on that thing. And then back here, I have the bucket to where it's just starting to touch on there, but really no weight. Um, but, you know, it's a pretty short drive over there. If it bleeds off a little, these gates are going to hold it up. I've done it before. It won't be a problem. So... If you're getting equipment, always get it bigger than you think you need it. This is a 22-foot trailer. I could have used a 24 or 26, but, I mean, this works. For what I got, this is what I'm using. All 
right, Capper here. It is uh, April 10th, 2018, and I made a command decision. I'm gonna try to start bush hogging at Project 211. Uh, just the tree rows is what I need to do. I was gonna rent a uh, bobcat, a skid steer with a bush hog, but it's uh, like 625 a day and 2,000 bucks for a full week. And in that week, you get 40 hours. So I decided I'll take the risk here with the coyote. Um, risk blowing a tire with the stobs. Uh, it's still pretty soft, so maybe I'll get lucky. So wish me luck, we'll see what happens. All right, here we are at Project 211. I had my buddy bring a load of gravel. Um, they drop spread most of this. But we got one little pile in the front and a pretty good sized pile in the back, which is actually good because this front doesn't really need a whole lot of gravel. That back area does. So I'll unload the coyote and uh, do a little bucket work on this and then try the bush hog. Okay, I let some air out of the tires just to give them a little bit more flex. An interesting note on this side, there was no air that came out. It was all fluid. All right, these things are only supposed to be filled with like one third to two thirds full of fluid and the rest air. You can see I got my nozzle on the top, but I got fluid for this entire uh, time I hit that valve. Uh, that's not really good. I mean, it's heavier weight for the tractor, but that's really not how it's designed. All right, these are some of the real culprits. These are uh, black locusts. Uh, them are about six, seven foot high. But you could see they have dangerous spikes. And there's some eight footers around here. So I am, uh, I decided I'm gonna take on going backwards and see how it goes that way. Okay, I think I've seen an antler here. Uh, looks like maybe two of them. Wow, well, these are old ones, of course. Uh, nice. Uh, this must have been a buck because there's bones and stuff here also. But uh, look at that, a one, two, three, four, five, a 10 point mainframe right there. Too bad it wasn't fresher, but uh, them are the biggest sheds I've ever found, even though they're old ones. And I was afraid to come out of the tractor because I didn't want to see if I popped the rear tire or not. I figured I would have felt it. Let's go check the other side. But I'm doing this all in reverse now, so I feel much safer going in reverse. All right, so far so good. Rock and roll, baby. Yeah! I know it's hard for you to see, but there's a huge washout right here. I was headed right towards it. Um, well, one of two reasons you need to get this in the winter time so you could see those, but also you gotta beat the mowing deadlines. But that right there is a straight off two foot drop. Right there, and I was headed right towards it. Will Rogers danger I'll be glad when this stuff is done got the road kind of rough graded anyways I need the uh, box blade back here to fix all of this 
Look at how pretty that is. The mean machine with the beautiful hills in the background. Okay, that pile right there is what used to be across the way where I did a little while ago. And that's what used to be here, what I'm doing now. So uh, there's a lot of leftover stops here. I thought I'd be able to do this one forward, but I'm having to do it all in reverse. This is a wet and nasty ditch with uh, about a thousand pound bush hog on it. Let's see how the coyote does here. Yeah, there's a quick look at it. It's not too wide of an area that's soft, maybe uh, three, three and a half feet. But it's one of them that's kind of steep enough you get your rear tire stuck in there and you're really gonna have to work to get yourself out. Uh, 10 or 12 deer 